the dark, cool night had settled in. There was no sound except for the wind blowing the trees and leaves around. It was the late summer of 421 BC in Greece. A shadow was lurking behind the pillars and within the walls, a watcher of people who wanted to pull them into his dimension, into his murky prison, a prison which would drain their energy until they died. This evil creature was very powerful, but with each new victim, he gained even more strength. He was a night prowler, a hunter. No human had more physical strength than he did. He could be anywhere waiting to grab his victims when they weren't ready. A woman who had come home after a festival earlier in the evening fell into a deep sleep. The moonlight shined on her and the red roses which were next to her bed. The stone walls became cool. Her sleep became deeper and deeper. A shadow moved around the room, a creeping, unnatural, smoky shadow. It was moving closer to the bed it ended up behind the bed and took form. The woman was at the mercy of the evil standing over her. The eight-foot, bald, muscular, pointy-eared brute with black eyes stared at his prey. The moonlight barely touched his forehead, but it illuminated most of his long, gray robe. His skin color was similar to your average Greek's, his hands were very big, even for his size. Then suddenly, before she could scream or even take her next breath, he picked her up like a doll and pulled her into the wall. The wall was undamaged. It was totally undisturbed. He simply took her into his gloomy world. And I read that, my friends, just to give you some more background on Gramas. The creature you're looking at now, the giant. I wrote that a few years ago. And I found it just a little while ago in the stack of paintings in my box over there. And I figured I'd add that to this video, Gramas' World Part 3. I don't think I'm going to do a part four. I might just make this a trilogy. Just This might be the final Gromus's World, Gromus's World 3. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. Let's take a closer look at this character. He could be anywhere. He could be even in here. He could be in the walls. He could be in your home, my home, under the floor, waiting to come out and drag someone in his, into his prison and into his dimension. And uh, Gromus is his name. And um, I wrote this story a few years ago. I didn't complete the story. I'll be honest with you. I don't like writing. I'll probably never write a book. I don't like it. Uh, I used to write poems and had a... a had one of them published, and I had uh, one or two other ones that were made into songs a long time ago. And uh, Loneliness was a poem that I wrote a long time ago that got published and even made into a song. But you know, the song wasn't popular. But anyway, that aside, uh, uh, I like painting. And that's what I really like to do is paint. And as you know, I've painted a lot of Gromus's paintings. I'll probably never do a book. Even though I got this story, a lot of it in my head. And uh, 
Certainly a lot could be written about him. He's a time traveler, so he can go to different times in history, different countries. He can go to different places. He's always watching. He can see the whole world in his dimension waiting to drag someone into it, into his prison. You can see the cell here, the prison, prison cell. So anyway, I just wanted to read you a little bit of this at the beginning of this video to give you an idea of where I was going with the story. Even though I probably will never write a book or complete a story about Gramas. I wrote a lot of poems in the past and short stories. Uh, some of them scary. Uh, some of them um, sad. Some of them just dramatic. But to continue with this story, just to show you where I would have taken it after he took the woman into his gloomy world, he simply took her into his gloomy world. Her family and friends searched for months, but they never found Helen. That was the woman's name. The day after she was taken, the marketplace was filled with people talking about what they thought happened. I haven't read this for years, for a few years, uh, except briefly before I made the video. I'm kind of winging it here, winging this video. I didn't, not much planning. I usually wing stuff, but uh, because Helen was just one of many people who had seemed to suddenly disappear. It was a true mystery. There was an old man who would stand just outside the market under a tree and tell people a story of terror and darkness. His name was Glaucanes. A lot of people actually listened to him, but most didn't. He was once a teacher of natural science and philosophy. For a time, he worked at the Theater of Dionysus in Athens, making plays which backed up his philosophy. Now he was warning people of a night terror an evil being from the underworld. So that's kind of where I would take it. He'd be warning people. Gramas would be lurking in the shadows, doing his thing. And then um, I'm old school, so I like the battle between good and evil. And good would always win at the end of my stories. If I ever made a story, good would win. I created a character named Eucles, who is a tough, tough Athenian, not a Spartan. But uh, they're very tough, but an Athenian warrior, and he would be fighting Gramas. Gramas would eventually take his wife to the underworld, to the prison. He would go to try to rescue her and that kind of thing. But you could do so many stories with this around the world. You can have him fighting all different types of people from different cultures. He would be taking people in. Um, he's a time traveler, so he would come to our time often, and you'd have a modern story, a lot of modern stories. Uh, so it could be anywhere. It could be anywhere around the world. It could be at any time, any year. He is a time traveler. He's eternal. He's an eternal being. And But good would always win in the end. Uh, Eucles was a great warrior, but he couldn't match Gramas strength for strength physically. Gramas is very smart also, but he would have to either trick him or outsmart Gramas. Something would have to happen. Uh, maybe he would get help intervention to to help him defeat this evil and uh, so I would like to have a really good theme to it's a scary character a very interesting character Gramas and uh, I'm fascinated with him but good would win in the end if I ever made a story that's what I would want this is my character, and I would want good to always win. You can leave the door open so you, there could be a sequel so he can come back. That's another one showing his prison. And this is kind of a... I've done a lot of paintings like this. It's a what-if painting. Like, what if he trapped a whole city inside a bubble prison and he can have control of it? Those are some of my favorite paintings to do. But yeah, in this video, just basically focusing on his story. I had forgot what year I set his origin story in. I forgot that it was 421 B.C. 
And that doesn't necessarily have to be the beginning since he's an immortal creature. It might, he, you know, I've even thought about it in my mind. Maybe he's like one of the fallen angels who, uh, you know, during the time of the flood of Noah, something like that, where he would have been cast out. So his origin story, there's room for development. You know, I can make his origin story uh, earlier than this, but according to what I wrote a couple, two or three years ago, I forgot exactly when, it's 40, let's see, it's 421 B.C., in Greece, 421 BC in Greece, a shadow was lurking behind the pillars and within the walls, a watcher of people who wanted to pull them into his dimension, into his murky prison, a prison which would drain their energy. You know, so that's that's where the story begins so far. And uh, he could be anywhere. And Gromus's World Part Three is probably, probably, uh, going to be the end in terms of, not in terms of Gromus or videos that I do on them, but I mean just Gromus, Gromus is World 1, Gromus is World 2, and Gromus is World 3. I would encourage you to go to my channel, you know, you're, if you're watching now, you could just click right on, go to the videos that I did a couple years ago. I think in a few months, it'll be two years that I did Gromus is World Part 2, 1 and 2. You can go back and watch Gromus's World 1 and 2 to get more information about this character and where I'm going with it. And uh, I, uh, as you know, I've done so many paintings. Gromus in the 11th century. Or Gromus visits the 11th century here. He's a time traveler. This is one of my favorite paintings. Not realistic at all, but that's the fun of it has a lot of style and character. Sometimes I make my paintings look real, sometimes I don't. My favorite paintings is a combination of both where they look real but then impressionistic too where you have a like a good balance of both. Yeah, but I like impressionism. Just think about it, art is very subjective. Just because something looks real doesn't mean it's the best. It depends on where you put your stuff. It depends on what it's about. It depends on the atmosphere you create, being artistic and crafting something. I mean, when I first started out, I tried to make it look as real as possible and just focusing on that. But then I started painting what I really wanted to paint and realized that a true artist doesn't just learn how to make stuff look real, but they can make it look uh, impressionable. Give it more style and character because if it's just the box of realism, if you're trapped inside that little circle or that little box of realism, you're trapped. There's not enough room to create. You can't create it as much. You can't invent. And I like to invent. I like to create. But when you do something like Impressionism, when you um, want to build style and character, you, you're outside that box. So that's why I do both. And think about it, if the Flintstones, let's say someone came along and they made the Jetsons or the Flintstones or the Smurfs or uh, Charlie Brown, the Charlie Brown character, uh, characters, if they tried to make them look exactly real, they would lose so much of their magic because they wouldn't have that style and character anymore. And uh, it's another one, another good painting. Of Gramas, and then he, he has giant dogs, like evil dogs, helping him guard the prison. His pets, evil pets. Yeah, I like this one. It shows him, it shows his world in part little bit of it and the dogs and then the prison cells in the background cells and then the giant dogs and uh, I don't know if I I think I might have tried to paint Eucalys a couple times but I don't know if that's here in the stacks well wait yeah, here 
maybe an idea of what he might look like, but nothing final about that. That's supposed to be either Eucalys or one of the heroes I was thinking about that would fight him. There's another painting, I think, of Eucalys that I did where he's, you could see his muscles and he looks more like a, a warrior. And I'd have to look for that. I got a lot of paintings here, though. A lot of paintings that I took out of my box of Gromus, just a whole bunch here. Give you an idea of what I've been doing. Here's another one. Silhouette coming out. And then, uh, this is fun. Talk about impressionism and giving it style and character. This is just fun. He's got the guy's leg. He's saying, come to Gromus. Really like this one. It's one of my favorites. Better not talk about him too much. He might show up. That's okay. I said my prayers. I'm ready. I got my... I've got all my weaponry here. <laughs> Just kidding. But hey, do what you gotta do. Especially if you're gonna protect yourself from this evil creature. Oh yeah, here's another one. I thought, here, I thought about doing this too. Like, um, he would be in the, um, maybe the 8th, 9th, 10th, 12th century, 11th, or whatever. And eventually he would uh, meet a warrior monk, like a warrior monk. Um, a monk who would be a, a, a good person and would fight against him. Thought about a story like that. He goes to different centuries and to get people. And there's a lot of different victims that he gets in different centuries. But then he always eventually meets somebody who will stand up against him, someone who's tough, smart, who can actually um, maybe trick him, find a way to beat him. No one can match his strength, so. They'd have to be pretty exceptional to, to beat him in any way. But yeah, I like this art a lot. Look at the light coming in. Look how big his prison is in this one. Yeah, I'm really happy with that one. So many paintings that if you've seen my channel and watched it, you've probably seen these paintings before. Here's a classic. This is one of the first ones I did where he supposedly trapped a whole city inside a bubble. It's just a what-if story. Not like, not like he has the actual power to do that, but if he keeps bringing people into his prison, gaining more strength, maybe he would one day, but look at that. That's just a classic. That's one of my favorites. I like the style. I like the way he's painted. I like the way I did his face. Look at the look on his face. Yeah, I painted this a couple years ago, a few years. I forgot exactly when, but it's just one of my favorites. Really like it a lot. Yeah, and like I said, eventually he would uh, go after Eucalys wife, take her to the prison, and then Eucalys would have to go rescue her and um, rescue her, take her out of there, be the hero that he is, defeat Gromus, and then leave the door open for a, a continuation of the story or a sequel or a part two. Now, this painting is new. Uh, within the year. I, I've done this probably a year ago. 
so fairly new. I haven't really painted much Gromis recently. I've been focused on my Night Shift Enigma series of paintings, which I really like, and those are near and dear to me. This is a good one, too. Really like it. So, Gromis, there's so many stories a person can make about Gromis. I mean, if I had, you know, if I had the desire to be a director, if I had a lot of money, you know, there's so many things you could do with this character. But, uh, you know, I'm not, that's not what I'm doing. Uh, but uh, this, this character is very, very um, interesting. And um, my art, you know, if you like this art that you're seeing, uh, visit redbubble.com. And then uh, uh, here's my shop link. I'll put it right here so you could see it. I think it's 738-21-8421. I think so. So just, it's seven, um, you'll see it. And I'll just, I better not say it because if I forget, give you the wrong one. So you'll see it here. No problem. I'll put it on the screen so there's no confusion. Trying to go by memory with something that you just memorized might not be the best idea. But, uh, gosh, there's just so many. I like this, these two different centuries. There's another warrior that he might potentially meet. Someone else who's trying to put up a fight. Similar idea. I like the painting so much I kind of did another one. Most, if not all, of my grandma's paintings are on redbubble.com. Just go to their search engine and type in Travis Olson, Gromis, the giant from another dimension. And then, like I said, just my shop link, I'll put it on this video. So you'll be able to see it well. That's Gromis' World Part 3. I hope you enjoyed it. I wanted to give you as much information as possible about the character. But go back and watch Gromis' World Part 1 and 2. I haven't seen those videos for a long time, so maybe I have additional information in those that I don't even remember. So um, have a good night, everybody. And uh, please uh, check out those other two videos so you can see more about this character. And good night.